mostly I'm inspired by the people around me doing the same thing and the people that came before me doing this. So the furniture world is just full of knowledge and we're getting to a place within it where people aren't gatekeeping that knowledge. And so just looking at the works of people I admire and being able to reach out to them and say, this thing is really cool. And they'll respond to me and say, I did it like this. And this, like, this was my technique is wild. Um, so I'm mostly inspired by the people around me, um, but I'm also inspired by life experiences that have been challenging. Like everybody else in the, the art and maker world, we're making things for a reason. Usually that reason is we've experienced something or we need something, um, so we're working through it. I'm inspired by my life. I'm inspired by people who are making beautiful objects. I'm inspired by the wood itself. I'm Larissa Huff. I'm a fine furniture maker, a teacher, I write articles for magazines, and work at the Wharton Eschrick Museum. And we are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I moved to Philadelphia, oh, I don't know, 12 years ago now. Um, and I came here because I wanted to live in a city where I could walk to the coffee shop, go to a comedy show, go to a concert. What is like cool and refreshing? Cool and refreshing. I succeeded in all of that, but I stayed because it was affordable and because the community is so strong. I like, in the summer seems appropriate. Gonna, let's do it. All right, let's go deep. There's such a good maker community, craftspeople, artists of all types, uh, big support network of museums and funding and acknowledgement of what we're doing and a bunch of friends who are you know, in the same universe as me. And so I just found a little world that felt so comfortable and I just settled right in. I mean, caffeine and a tasty sugary treat. What more could you ever want? I went to college for teaching. In fourth grade, I fell in love with math. I wasn't very good at it. Uh, I have to study it and practice it. Um, it doesn't come naturally to me, but I really loved it. So I decided I wanted to teach math when I was in the fourth grade. And then I went to college for it. That's gonna happen like a lot. <laughs> the fact that I fell in love with a subject that didn't come naturally to me and took practice and learning made me want to help the people around me learn the same way that I did when they were getting frustrated. So. I went to college in an effort to basically, my grand plan was to reform the way that we teach math so that we could teach it in an applied sense for students who don't necessarily just pick it up super easily. Um, and now I like to think I do that with woodworking. So that's the goal, is to, uh, to make woodworking accessible and apply this knowledge to something tangible. So when I moved to Philadelphia, I was studying to get certified to teach here in Pennsylvania. Uh, and I was teaching SAT prep and tutoring math in the meantime to fill the financial gap. And I was cruising Craigslist for teaching opportunities that I could do without that certification. Uh, and then I came across an ad for a woodworking apprenticeship slash teaching assistant. And I thought it sounded really cool. Uh, my grandfather was a cabinet maker but he, he had this very cool thing where he worked in the basement and at the top of the basement stairs a, a, there was a red light and when the light was on he was working and no one was allowed to go down there. So I never actually saw him do any woodworking. I just heard dust collection and like chop saws and stuff but I never actually saw it occur. Um, so when I saw this something was triggered in my 22 year old brain that was like oh this, this could be cool. So I applied um, and I was hired by Jeff Lore as an apprentice and I had to agree to stay for two years because an apprentice cost the business money for the first two years as they're learning, making mistakes, stuff like that. Um, and after two years I stayed for another seven. Puzzle pieces. It's like creating your own puzzle and then making all the parts and sticking it together. And helped grow the business. We ran a school, we made furniture. 
Um, I made a very, very close friend in Rob Spies and a collaborative partner and we, the two of us, created classes and made commissioned furniture and I kept learning and growing. Um, and then last year I left and got my own studio space and now I'm out of my own, making my own furniture, teaching my own classes. Yeah. Mediocre fit. It's fine, it's a tool cabinet. We're at Jinxed. It is a, they have a couple places throughout Philly and a lot of my home was furnished from this place. Stack with the pull on the inside. A series of tiny drawers. I'm like into this. I feel like people don't usually donate math books. Burn them, throw them away. <laughs> I don't, I wish I had knew the answer. To, I wish I knew why that ad for some reason sounded great to me. Uh, it must be something in my subconscious that I was like, grandpa did this, he made cool stuff. What if I made cool stuff? Um, but I had never touched a tool. I had never used a, a, you know, a machine. I had maybe sanded a couple things, um, but I used all of the, I used the step stools my grandpa made. We had cabinets in our house that he made. So I knew that this universe existed but I had never tried it. So something about this ad, I thought it was cool. I went out there, I saw what Jeff was building. I saw his farm and this like majestic space where this really romantic, like what you picture woodworkers doing, that's what's happening out there. There's like horses in the pasture and this old workbench and it just, everything has this patina and it's just all the romantic elements that you expect. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know this existed. And it changed everything. For the past year, I have been doing some commission work here and there, but I've been really exploring personal work, which is very new to me. Uh, at my previous job, we would make furniture and go to craft shows and try to sell it. Obviously, we have to make a living. Uh, and we would teach classes for the same reason. We wanted to teach people. It was great meeting people. We also had to you know, support our families. So in this past year, I've been lucky to do a fellowship at the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship. And that was my first allotted time where I could just make things without having to sell it. I was earning a paycheck, um, again, in a very majestic, beautiful place with the support system of these woodworking icons. So I made a piece inspired by my family going through Hurricane Ian, and I felt it, and I was getting photos from my family and my friends of their destroyed homes and objects, and I was feeling those things as I was making the piece, and I fell in love with that process. So I'm really trying to angle my future in my business in the direction of being able to make work based on life experiences and things that I feel, things that my friends and family go through, um, and hope that it resonates with people because it feels really great when I'm making it and when I'm sharing it. So hopefully there's a future in that. It's used a lot in um, instrument making. So like ukuleles that like bend the sides. Um, Otherwise, yeah, I'm taking commission work and teaching classes at craft schools up and down the East Coast so far, um, hopefully a whole, around the country. I'll make it out to California at some point. And I'm teaching stuff that I've made or stuff that the schools request that they think I can help people learn. Um, so I get to kind of balance making things that I love and teaching things that I love. Welcome to my row home here in Philadelphia, where me and my husband live. This one um, was way more recent. I made this just like three or four years ago. It was my first attempt at making timbre doors, which I've obviously done a bunch since then. Um, but this one's got a cool S curve to it. The whole desk is curved and there's a little pencil tray in here inspired by Wharton Escher. Lucky that I own this one.
these poles are attached by tiny, tiny little dovetails. So I hand shaped the pole and then added the little dovetail and set it in the drawer front. And then on top of it, a bunch of weird boxes I've made. This is a crowd pleaser. They're just some of them. I have more downstairs, <laughs> but pile of math books. Like everybody, every adult has a stack of calculus books, don't they? No? Is that just me? So this is what me and Rob Spies call the Kestrel chair. We designed it together because um, we made a desk in a week at some point, and Rob decided we should probably make a chair to go with the desk. So it was a relatively quick design, but we've duplicated it over and over at this point. Um, and it has this cool mitered back so we didn't have to bend it and hand shaped all the components. And there's obvious connections between this design and the Windsor chair that I learned from Joe Graham. I took a lot of those skills and applied it into this guy. This one, ugh. I made this one inspired by my grandmother because she had a jewelry collection from my grandfather being a merchant marine and bringing back jewelry from all the ports he was at. Um, so I made this after she passed away as just like a really lovely means of storing jewelry. Of course, mine is not as fancy or meaningful as hers was, but um, each, each one of these has a little storage inside, continuous green across the front. My favorite project is probably the one I just finished, which was the hurricane cabinet. It's a wall hanging cabinet. Um, it's long and narrow. It's intended to be hung seven feet up on the wall so that if there are floodwaters, your nostalgic items stored in it will not get wet, is the, the idea. It's actually in a gallery at the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship. And then hopefully it will go into a gallery nearby in Wayne in the winter time so hopefully we'll travel a little bit um, and I've made I mean all the pieces I made before that or many of the pieces I made before that were in collaboration with Rob Spies and I loved each of them because we work completely differently uh, so we're really good collaborative partners I am really interested in small tiny details making mechanisms work making pulls that are hyper thought out and really comfortable to use and Rob was really good about getting carcasses together, like getting an actual object to stand and then I would come in and do the fine details. So we made this chest of drawers that had this elaborate book match veneer across the front that I really loved and that, lucky for us, was purchased and now lives in someone's home, which is what we can all hope for. I don't know, little parts of every piece I love. I don't know that I have a favorite. Wood, all the wood I use is uh, locally sourced from Pennsylvania because we live in the hardwood capital of the country, if not the continent. I'm not sure of the parameters of that, but Pennsylvania supplies hardwoods to people all over the world. Um, so I would be remiss not to use the beautiful hardwoods that surround us. So I use maple and cherry and walnut and oak, things that grow in the forest around us. The support network that has allowed me to get here is extensive, but uh, my family has always been cheerleaders for me. When I decided to not be a math teacher and become a woodworker, there was nobody that was like, you think that's a good idea? Everybody was fully on board, um, even though I decided to pick up and move 1,200 miles away. Um, my shop mates now, Eric and Amanda, are constantly telling me that I'm doing a great job and motivating me. and. They're always there if I have, like, does this seem like a weird thing to do? And they're like, yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. So it's great to have that. Um, Jeff Lord taught me everything about how to use tools and how to make furniture out of wood. So I owe lots of where I am to him. And Rob Spies taught me to be uh, adventurous in my designing and take risks and try new things. And then um, my husband is also an artist, so Thankful, thankfully, he understands that I have to pick up and leave for two months and go do a fellowship. Um, 
and he's, you know, backing me constantly. He'll sit on the couch and talk wood ideas even though he has no idea about woodworking at all. I will be like, what do you think about sliding dovetails here? And he's like, yeah, sure, sliding dovetails, of course, sliding dovetails. Yeah, the women in woodworking community has been huge. They've uh, mostly internet friends because we do live in 2023, but the ones that I've met in real life and on the internet are constantly helping me, um, encouraging me, showing me opportunities to do stuff, showing me paths that I didn't know existed. Um, I don't know, support all over the place. It's all over the place. Woodworking is the space where I am the most focused and the most able to just step away from the chaos that exists just in the world. We're all stressed. We all have to earn money. We all are dealing with politics and, in my case, the loudness of the city around me. And, you know, there's always something to worry about. And when you're in the shop, you have to be focused on what's in front of you because not only is stuff sharp and dangerous, but these are like, you're making an object and any misstep means you have to backtrack and fix that misstep um, and it's time. So I love being able to walk in these doors and turn it off and just focus on what's in front of me. And now that I'm making work that's inspired by my life and the life of people that I love, it's even more enjoyable. It feels like, like therapy, like I'm, I'm working through things while I'm creating objects and I'm kind of turning off everything else that's going on in the world around me. What does my future look like? I don't know. Um, I'm in a very new chapter of life. I just turned the page on something very new and I'm saying yes to pretty much everything. Uh, and I don't know what will stick and what won't, um, which is very exciting. So as long as I am making things and I'm in the wood shop and I'm able to teach people and make this craft accessible to others, that's all I really want for my future. Um, anything beyond that is just a bonus and something I will be lucky to have. I didn't know what fulfillment felt like before woodworking. I, I mean, I was young, but I didn't understand the joy of starting with a rough material and finishing with an object that I had to problem solve my way through and create from nothing and it is satisfying in a way that I can't quite express. It's, it's humbling, it's comforting, it's exciting. And I feel like I'm growing with every piece that I make, which is something I'm so grateful for. I don't feel like I'm stuck in the loop of doing the same thing every day. So the fulfillment, I imagine, will keep going in, indefinitely as long as I'm willing to try new things and meet new people and go to new places. And I hope that I can do all of those things. Larissa walking tour of Philadelphia, in case you wonder where Beyonce gets her birthday cake.